fact, one of the most striking features of the natural world is that across a vast range of physical, biological, and other systems, we're continually confronted with what seems to be immense complexity. And indeed, throughout most of history, it has been taken almost for granted that such complexity, being so vastly greater than the works of humans, could only be the work of a supernatural being. But my discovery that many very simple programs produce great complexity immediately suggests a rather different explanation. For all it takes is that systems in nature operate like typical programs, and then it follows that their behavior will often be complex. And the reason that such complexity is not usually seen in human artifacts is just that in building these, we tend in effect to use programs that are specially chosen to give only behavior simple enough for us to be able to see that it will achieve the purposes we want. One might have thought that with all their successes over the past few centuries, the existing sciences would long ago have managed to address the issue of complexity, but in fact, they have not. And indeed, for the most part, they have specifically defined their scope in order to avoid direct contact with it. For while their basic idea of describing behavior in terms of mathematical equations works well in cases like planetary motion, where the behavior is fairly simple, it almost inevitably fails whenever the behavior is more complex. And more or less the same is true of descriptions based on ideas like natural selection in biology. But by thinking in terms of programs, the new kind of science that I develop in this book is for the first time able to make meaningful statements about even immensely complex behavior. In the existing sciences, much of the emphasis of the past century or so has been on breaking systems down to find their underlying parts, then trying to analyze these parts in as much detail as possible. And particularly in physics, this approach has been sufficiently successful that the basic components of everyday systems are by now completely known. But just how these components act together to produce even some of the most obvious features of the overall behavior we see in the past remained almost a complete mystery. Within the framework of the new kind of science that I developed in this book, however, it finally becomes possible to address such a question. So from the tradition of the existing sciences, one might expect that its answer would depend on all sorts of details and be quite different for different types of physical, biological, and other systems. But in the world of simple programs, I've discovered that the basic forms of behavior, same basic forms of behavior occur over and over again, almost independent of underlying details. And what this suggests is that there are quite universal principles that determine overall behavior and that can be expected to apply not only to simple programs, but also to systems throughout the natural world and elsewhere. In the existing sciences, whenever a phenomenon is encountered that seems complex, it's almost taken for granted that the phenomenon must be the result of some underlying mechanism that is itself complex. But my discovery that simple programs can produce great complexity makes it clear that this is in fact not correct. And indeed, in the later parts of this book, I will show that even remarkably simple programs seem to capture the essential mechanisms responsible for all sorts of important phenomena that in the past have always seemed far too complex to allow any simple explanation. It's not uncommon in the history of science that new ways of thinking are what finally allow long-standing issues to be addressed. But I've been amazed at just how many issues central to the foundations of the existing sciences I've been able to address by using the idea of thinking in terms of simple programs. For more than a century, for example, there's been a confusion about how thermodynamic behavior arises in physics. Yet from my discoveries about simple programs, I've developed a quite straightforward explanation. And in biology, my discoveries provide for the first time an explicit way to understand just how it is that so many organisms exhibit such great complexity. Indeed, I even have increasing evidence, I said then, that thinking in terms of simple programs will make it possible to construct a single truly fundamental theory of physics from which space, time, quantum mechanics, and all the other known features of our universe will emerge. I had the first kind of signs that that would be possible. It, it took another 20 years to sort of bring that to fruition and to get to the point where we have in our uh, physics project in the last couple of years, which has been very exciting to see. It's kind of the, the next big step. And it required a number of really important ideas that build on that sort of take for granted the ideas of a new kind of science, but build to another level, and I'll talk a bit about that later. So I went on here to say, when mathematics was introduced into science, it provided for the first time an abstract framework in which scientific conclusions could be drawn without direct reference to physical reality. Yet, despite all its development over the past few thousand years, mathematics itself has continued to concentrate only on rather specific types of abstract systems, most often ones somehow derived from arithmetic or geometry. 
But the new kind of science I describe in this book introduces what are in a sense much more general abstract systems based on rules of essentially any type whatsoever. Now I will add a footnote to this that one of the things that's come out of our physics project is that a better understanding of the sort of true foundations of mathematics, and in fact, a thing I've been working on for the last several months, has been a sort of physicalization of metamathematics that I think allows one to go quite a bit further than I was able to say 20 years ago about uh, understanding kind of the, the role and, and place of mathematics um, in, in the structure of science. But anyway, I went on here to say, one might have thought that such systems would be too diverse for meaningful general statements to be made about them systems with with uh, general abstract systems but the crucial idea that has allowed me to build a unified framework for the new kind of science that I describe in this book is that just as the rules for any system can be viewed as corresponding to a program so also its behavior can be viewed as corresponding to a computation traditional intuition might suggest that to do more sophisticated computations would always require more sophisticated underlying rules but what launched the whole computer revolution is the remarkable fact that universal systems with fixed underlying rules can be built that can in effect perform any possible computation. The threshold for such universality has however generally been assumed to be high and to be reached only by elaborate and special systems like typical electronic computers. But one of the surprising discoveries in this book is that in fact there are systems whose rules are simple enough to describe in just one sentence that are nevertheless universal. And this immediately suggests that the phenomenon of universality is vastly more common and important in both abstract systems and nature than has ever been imagined before. And I have to say that, that since the book, uh, in the book, one of the, the big results was the Rule 110 cellular automaton and its universality. Since the book, there was a, another uh, sort of threshold of universality question that was raised in the book about the simplest Turing machine that could conceivably be universal and a few years after the, uh, uh, the publication of the book, uh, I put up a prize um, for somebody to prove or disprove the universality of that Turing machine. And um, a chap called Alex Smith was able to prove that indeed that Turing machine is universal, giving another sort of uh, uh, boost to the things that I say here about the threshold for universality. And, and there's, there have been more results along similar lines. There's, there's one that I strongly suspect now about combinators that we put up another prize for uh, as yet unclaimed. Um, we'll see how that, that goes too. But I go on here to say, and this is in a sense in, in many ways the punchline, uh, what I view as being a punchline of, um, uh, of the science that um, uh, is a new kind of science. I say, but on the basis of many, of many discoveries, I have been led to a still more sweeping conclusion, summarized in what I call the principle of computational equivalence, that whenever one sees behavior that is not obviously simple in essentially any system, it can be thought of as corresponding to a computation of equivalent sophistication. And this um, one very basic principle has a quite unprecedented array of implications for science and scientific thinking. And I have to say that I thought there were many implications back 20 years ago, but they pale in comparison with what is now clear uh, exists.